Hello everyone, Tommy J here and welcome to I Show You Games. Today I'm here to show you Gianna Sisters Twisted Dreams, which is a single player 2D puzzle platformer developed by Black Forest Games. So Black Forest Games are responsible for a few other games, such as Gianna Sisters DS, which was released back in 2009, but under a different company name as the original company did go bankrupt, and then they reformed into Black Forest Games with a few key members. Anyway, let's have a quick look at the options menu. So in game options, all you have is audio, which has four sliders and then the ability to change music styles. If for example, you don't like one style, you can turn the other off. And then it has controls, which are just some basic controls, not actually uh, the ability to rebind them or anything like that. You may also notice there's no video options. Now, these are actually all outside of the game in a separate launcher. So the video options are actually pretty good. You've got a whole bunch of resolutions. You've got uh, the ability to turn shadows, anti-aliasing, particle quality, distortion effects, and shader quality onto different levels. So if for some reason you can't run this on full, which I assume most systems will be able to because it's not incredibly difficult to run, uh, you can turn those things down just to give you that higher FPS experience. Unfortunately, there is no option for borderless full screen, but that's all right. There's also fully rebindable controls in that options menu, um, and that's both for your keyboard and your gamepad. Anyway, let's get into the game itself. So this game is a typical puzzle platformer with some unique mechanics added in, and you have a whole bunch of different modes. You've got easy where things are pretty much less dangerous, then you've got default where you unlock things for other modes, Score attack, where you pretty much play through a level trying to get the highest possible score you can. Then there's time attack, where you play through a level as fast as you can and nothing else really matters, only time. Then there's hardcore, uh, where there are no checkpoints, so if you die within the level you have to start the level from scratch, which can actually be pretty hard as some levels take 5 to 10 minutes or longer depending on if you're trying to collect everything. And then there's uber hardcore mode, where if you die, you restart from level 1. So, from memory, there are 23 levels. And, yeah, you die on any of them. Back to level 1, progress wiped. So that's, that's there if you want it. Anyway, let's put it on normal and have a bit of a look. So, the backstory to this game is that Gianna, the sister you control, is trying to find her sister Maria, who's been kidnapped and is being held hostage in the dream world. And yeah, you pretty much want to rescue her. And there's a little animation here just to betray that. Alrighty, so as you can see, I'm about halfway through the game. The first world has six levels. The second has, I think it's seven, yep. And then the final one has ten. So yeah, there are a decent amount of levels. Anyway, let's get going with this one right here. So, this is the game, and as far as the controls go, they're pretty simple. You have jump, duck, left and right, and that's just by default bound to the arrow keys. And then you have some abilities. So pushing A will swap you between worlds, um, which is really just swapping the character's personas. And then you have a couple of others. So W spins you, which you can only do in this cute persona. And then D gives you a dash, which you can do in the punk persona. And using an ability will automatically switch you to the correct persona. So if I dash, it'll put me to this persona. And as you may notice, the aesthetics are pretty gorgeous. Like this game, as far as just being a 2D puzzle platformer goes, it looks pretty good. Okay, let's just jump over there. Oop, nope, that would have crushed me. Look, okay, I switch back. So a lot of things actually change in the world based on which persona you're in. So for example, if I switch between these personas, it will extend or retract that platform there. Or, if I swap to the cute persona and puts you in this evilish kind of world, it'll block that off. So you do need to use personas, or your different personas, to get through different parts of the game. What's up here? Oop. And your dash will actually bounce you off things, so as you 
saw a little bit there. Is there anything up there? Don't think so. Yeah, your dash will actually um, let you hit things in the game. And this is just an example right here of the world being blocked off uh, when you're in one persona. So in the good cutesy looking world, you can't really get through that. Okay, let's move on. So there are these gems everywhere, which you've probably noticed. And pretty much the point is to try and collect as many of them as possible, if that's what you're into. If you're not into collecting them, finishing the level will suffice. Let's see if there's anything up there. Nope. So I mentioned before that dash can actually be used to bounce off walls. And if there's a narrow passageway, your dash will actually uh, continue bouncing. So you can use it to get around. Okay, so this looks like a time to glide. Swap that. So yeah, when you swap, it does this really nice pop-in kind of animation. So just for example, that mushroom in the right, right now, or that tree stump right there, like they actually morph and they bounce and it looks really nice and really, really smooth. So these platforms are fading, as you can see there. Now there are invulnerable enemies like this one, which I can't kill. These. Get up there. Okay, how am I going to do this? Oh, this one. Okay. So you can swap personas whenever you want, which can be quite handy as you're probably going to need to. Ooh, what's that up there? Don't think I can get up there. Oh, well. And nope, there is nothing down there. That's just a dead end. And the game can actually be quite difficult at times. So, if you screw up, you will die. Whoop. You can swap personas while using your abilities. So, while I'm in this persona, I can swap here and continue using it. Which is pretty handy in some areas. Let's bounce a few to get there. And keep pushing onwards. Whoop. That is an invulnerable enemy. There's actually a very large enemy variety as well, which I wasn't really expecting from a puzzle platformer, particularly when so many of them don't really fight you or anything like that. Is that something over on the left? Nope. Okay. Let's land on there. There we go. Want to take us up. And that would have killed me, so yeah, stepped off. Is there something up there? Nope. So yeah, this game does have a fair amount of secrets, actually. Oop, under there. Like up there. How can I get that? Okay, so in the evil world, that's a fish. Can I? Ah, I can't really get up to him. Ooh, actually, I might just be able to. Yeah, there we go. Jump on him there. So yeah, it's not just character models that do change when you switch personas. There is a whole bunch. And switch to get these. Oh, there is a secret. So in this game, uh, there are secrets which unlock new gallery artwork. And there's a gallery with a whole bunch of concept art and things like that. And some of them are actually really, really good looking. Let's keep jumping. Am I going to do this? Just glide. Yep. So you may have noticed just then, there are a bunch of things in both the foreground and background, and it can look really cool. Ooh. There we go. Just lift you up. And there's something there. So, ooh. Quite often, levels have a bunch of alternate paths and things like that. And some levels... Yeah, it may take you a long time to actually collect all of the gems. Just keep falling. No, that doesn't have those skull signs. There we go. Ooh, that was an invulnerable enemy. 
but luckily these little boxes are checkpoints and you don't really get penalized for dying which is pretty good and also if you die any gems you've collected will actually stay yours okay so i'm probably yep there we go just bounce up using these very cool and pick up another shield because you do die in one hit unless you have that shield but you can bounce oop nope you can bounce on enemies if you do it properly okay oop. almost died oh god so something else you may have noticed is the game actually has some really nice music and it's rather seamless with its transition like each of them will have that same track playing, but one with an electric guitar and one in... I don't even know what that is, like a xylophone? Anyway, and if you swap between them, the music actually continues and is really seamless. So I might just let you listen to the music and the sound effects for a little bit. Anyway, died again, but as I said before, thankfully the checkpoints are pretty generous. And I have no idea how to get down there. Let's see if there's a way back here. Nope, that looks like death. Normally the signs are pretty accurate. If they tell you you'll die, you'll die. Yeah. But as I said before, no penalty and the checkpoints are pretty nice. So you're okay to actually try things like that, which is pretty good. At least on normal difficulty. Nothing up there. Let's glide over these. So, the game's controls are, as I mentioned before, fairly simplistic. You do only have those seven buttons. And if you want to change worlds easily, it's as simple as just using the ability that whoop, is only available in that world. So, let's jump. There we go. But the controls feel incredibly smooth, like they feel responsive and yeah, you never feel like you're being screwed over by the controls, which is very important in a puzzle platform because yeah, if you're dying because something's up with the controls, ooh, let's dive then. Let's just get these, then yeah, be an effective puzzle platformer. And there's something up here. get along here try and get all of these so yeah i actually spent a good amount of time trying to get gems and i don't think i've got them all no i haven't Oop. and there's the end of the level Ooh, actually there's some more over here yeah no that's it so yeah the game does has a large amount of replayability uh one because you can collect more gems and then overall get more stars um you'll be able to collect more of those secrets. Oh wow, I only got three out of the possible six secrets. So there's three more uh, of those larger gems you can find to unlock more gallery content. And then you have all of those other modes as well. Alrighty, so there we go. That level took what, about 10 minutes? So yeah, there is a decent amount of time you can spend playing this game, which is pretty good. Anyway, there's a few more things I wanna show you. First off, we have just the gallery, which I've been talking about, and it's just what you get for finding those big crystals. And yeah, it's it's actually pretty cool. So it shows like what things change into when you swap between personas and things like that. There's a whole bunch of them. Anyway, there's also some extra maps, just event maps that the devs added in. So they're pretty cool. I've played through a couple of them and yeah, they are a good bit of fun. Anyway, Overall, this game is amazing. 
In the sea of 2D puzzle platformers, this one really does stand out. The controls feel smooth, and the swapping between personas to change the world is a really interesting mechanic and pretty much seamless. Aesthetically, the game is absolutely gorgeous. The animations, the enemies, the scenery, the way the water moves, it's all incredible. And as you've probably heard, the music's pretty damn good too, and really adds to each of the personas the character takes on. Also, the amount of replayability the game offers is absolutely huge because there are just so many game modes. The base game itself goes for $14.99 in Australia and the US, and for people in Europe, £14.99. However, it has gone on sale a bunch of times for $5 or less, and at that value, if you're into puzzle platformers, I would definitely go for it. This is, this is definitely one of the better puzzle platformers I've played ever. So there's also a DLC pack that adds more maps uh, for fairly cheap, and you can buy both the DLC and the base game in a bundle for a bit of a discount, which is always nice. Anyway guys, this has been Tommy J with I Show You Gianna Sisters Twisted Dreams. If you found the video helpful, feel free to favorite, like, and or subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a good one.